Good morning. Welcome back to a new week and another edition of our Anchored in the Word Morning Reflection. And thank you for joining us this morning. And I hope that this study is going to be a tremendous help to you. Uh, the topic we're going to address this week is found in Luke 14. We're looking at verses 7 through 14. And we are looking at the topic of living with an anticipation of the resurrection. And we will be examining a parable that Jesus taught as he was at a wedding feast and he was observing the way that people were interacting with one another. And so we'll be talking about God's kingdom and certain topics related to that issue. And so I hope that these things will be super helpful to you. Let's go ahead and pull out our Bibles and look at Luke chapter 14. We're reading verses 7 through 14, and I'm, I'm going to read the first section of it, and then I'm going to skip down to the end of it so that we catch the whole uh, thrust of what is there. Here's what it says. And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden, when he marked how they chose out the chief rooms, saying unto them, When thou art bidden if of any man to a wedding, sit not down at the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. And he that bade thee come to thee and say, Give this man place, and thou begin with shame to take the lowest room. When thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Now there's a phrase that I want us to focus in on, but before we look at that, um, I want us to kind of summarize what's in front of us. So two statements. The first statement is that people who anticipate the resurrection are going to live purposefully today. There are some people that give the impression that if our focus is on eternity rather than now, then we're not going to seize the moment that we're in. But the biblical teaching is in fact the exact opposite. Those who will seize this moment and live it wisely are going to live it with an anticipation and an understanding that there is a final judgment and there is a resurrection both of the just and of the unjust. And so as we think about this text and the truths that are, that are packaged in this text, we will see that God wants us to live with an anticipation of the resurrection. So here's the phrase that I want us to focus in on. The phrase is, thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. In order for us to appreciate what Jesus is teaching in these verses, we need to consider that statement. And so I consider it with a few observations. First, how people think about themselves and relate to other people is ultimately the fruit of a worldview. And that word worldview, the word worldview is a word that I like to use often. It's really talking about our perspective about how life works, what has value, what we are as people, who God is, our relationship to him. Worldview is like the lens that we filter everything that we observe in life through. And so our behavior ultimately is something that flows out of what we believe, out of our worldview. It is downstream. It is fruit. It is symptomatic. And so to appreciate the word, we've got to understand the big picture and the concepts that are a part of that big picture. So let's dig into that very briefly this morning. First of all, we see that this is God's world and it exists for his glory. The first passage that comes to my mind when I think about this concept is Colossians chapter 1. <coughs> it says, By him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him and he is before all things and by him all things consist now these verses are specifically talking about christ he is the one who created all things he is the one who holds all things together he is the one for whom all things were created so he created everything in this world out of nothing and he did it for himself. And when I say that, we're talking about the triune God. So we have Father, Son, and Spirit. Each person of the Godhead has a unique role in certain functions in, in this creation. And so the Father creates the world through the Son and for the Son. This is 
the Lord Jesus's earth. And when we come to the book of Revelation, he talks about the title deed to the earth. And who is the one who's worthy to open it? It's the Lord Jesus Christ, because this world belongs to him. And so he created all things for himself out of nothing. And the crowning jewel or the most significant piece of the creation that he makes is mankind. Mankind is significant because mankind is created in the image of God. And he was given this purpose of taking care of the creation <coughs> for God. <laughs> and so as Adam is supposed to be taking care of the creation, exercising dominion, God is revealing his goodness to Adam. And God is giving him the opportunity to enjoy that goodness. He created us with the ability for communion, fellowship, relationship. And ultimately, we are to be growing in an eternal relationship with God, doing what he created us to do. And so this is an important piece of the big picture. The second thing is this. Not only is this God's world and it exists for his glory, but it's also a fallen world. Though Adam failed to be faithful to God's plan, God graciously determined to redeem his creation back to himself through the second Adam. The passage that comes to mind is 1 Corinthians 15. He says, in Adam all die, in Christ shall all be made alive. Or Romans chapter 5, by one man sin entered the world and death by sin, and so death passed on all men for that all have sinned. God determined to redeem mankind to himself through the second Adam. And so scripture is ultimately the record from creation to the fall, to the painful effects of the fall, to the promise of redemption, and then God's accomplishment of that redemption, and the anticipation of the final completion of all that he has promised. And that anticipation is anticipating God's kingdom. And so we are living at this moment in this interim period between redemption and glory. And this is what Paul writes about in Romans chapter 8, where he says, if we hope for that we see not, then do it with patience, wait for it. We are living in the already and not yet, in the interim period between redemption and glorification. How we live actually matters, and how we live has bearing on the role that we're going to have in this eternal kingdom. And so these are a lot of things for us to think about. The question is, what do we take away from the study today? Well, what we need to take away from the study <laughs> is that <coughs> this is God's world, but it's a fallen world. It's a world that the basis of redemption has been established, but we are living between redemption and glorification. And so how we live matters as a redeemed people waiting for the adoption glorification. Well, I hope that that gives you some things to think about this morning. If this is something that you think would be a help to others, take a moment to share that and perhaps share feedback if you think that would be encouraging and helpful. And have a blessed rest of your day. Lord willing, we'll meet again tomorrow. Bye now.